Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, uh, I got a 2010 Subaru here. Uh, it's a Forester, and uh, we want to put we put brakes on it. This would be uh, we want to put this back brake on it right here, and uh, they get pretty tough. We bought new rotors for it for the back. Uh, the front ones I got to fix those up a little bit. They wasn't too bad, but we put new brakes all the way around it, uh, and then uh, the last one would be this one right here to get finished. Now I don't know if you know. Uh, these metal rims, they have a tendency to really, uh, you know, seize on it. So I put uh, like an anti-seize in behind them sometimes. This, I didn't do this one here before. I don't know why I didn't do the, uh, these before. But we're going to go ahead and get this thing off. And then uh, go ahead and see if we can get that uh, rotor off of there too. So, okay. Now, normally this is like, it's really in there. So... Sometimes you have to take something to sway it. You definitely don't want to do that to aluminum rim. And now you can see uh, it's uh, pretty rough. The vehicle's been set, and I don't drive it all the time. Uh, we kind of use it a little bit more for a winter car our vehicle because it's all-wheel drive and man i'll tell you what uh if you know anything about subarus uh and when it comes to all-wheel drive subaru i think subaru is number one uh they they just this thing pretty much goes anywhere i put winter tires on it and uh all four tires you know all the way around winter tires and man it'll just it'll just climb okay let's get started on it uh first we're gonna need something like a 14 millimeter uh, wrench. I'm just going to use wrenches on it and then we're going to try to get this off. Now, normally what it does, it takes two small uh, bolts and you could, or even one, but uh, you can take two 10 millimeter uh, bolts and stick them into the holes. Most of your uh, Toyotas and Nissans, uh, uh, there's a little place where uh, you can go ahead and put the little screws in it and then I'll just help pull that hub off of there. Uh, if there because what happens is this got a uh, rotor. Okay, it's got a disc brake on it, and then uh, it's also the, the emergency brake on this one is uh, drum brake. So there's a little drum here with a little set of small set of brakes behind this piece right here. Uh, that's for your emergency brakes, and uh, you know they'll get tightened up whenever you back up. Sometimes when you back up down a hill or something, they'll automatically tighten themselves up, and it does make it a little bit difficult to come off. But uh, just got to keep working at it. Put a little bit of. Uh, little spray on little, I put a little WD-40 on it and see if that'll help loosen it up by the time I get these other bolts off of here now the this piece here in the back that's your uh, uh, caliber that would be the bracket that holds the you know your caliber on the back of it and uh, uh, it's somebody went in and stripped them out uh, I hadn't had this car well I've had it for quite a few years but uh, it was like that one because it was a used car when I bought it. But uh, I went ahead and ordered these. I think it's like five something a piece for each one of these bolts. But uh, it's worth getting them. You know, what I mean that way they're new. And I'll put anti seize on all this, all this stuff here. So, all right, I'm gonna get started on it, and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing off. Now we do uh, check these here and pull them out and make sure these are greased up in their function, you know, where they, they actually work, like this right here. So we do we do make sure that this 
add something in them. See, this is this is a little bit dry, so we'll we'll grease that one up. Now we got two bolts here in the back. Let's just pull these out. Give me a little bit more room back here at this wrench. I think I have a ratchet ones here. Another one here at the bottom. Now that's the bracket that holds the, the caliber on. And uh, we'll be pulling these pieces here out and putting new ones in. So let's put this down here. Now the thing is, we're trying to get this here off. And uh, they're pretty, pretty well seized. Sometimes you can smack them with a rubber mallet. Sometimes you can't. Okay. That was a lot easier than I thought it was. These are the little disc or little uh, drum brakes on the back here you can see and then uh, you see inside of here it's like a little well it's a drum but it also has a disc on it so these are mercy brake here and then we're going to pop out this little piece of rubber here we'll keep it. Okay see so uh Listen here, I could probably clean that up. I have a cousin that has a, uh, actually a cutter that you can resurface these, but they make them so thin that it's not really good to do that because uh, they have a chance of heating up too much if they're really thin. Uh, they normally did that to some of the older vehicles. Uh, of course, the metal was a lot better, better back then. So we're just go ahead and replace them. Uh, they're not, I don't know what did that rubber. They're not really that, uh, I guess I guess you want to call them, they're not real expensive, but they're not really cheap, you know what I'm saying? Oh, here it is. I'll make sure I keep that little piece of rubber. And then we're going to put a new rotor on it. Um, what I'll do is, let's go ahead and see if I can loosen up these brakes in the back. Because like I said, they're just Mercy brakes. So they really don't. Uh, have anything to do with the vehicle except uh, when you put your e-brakes on you know you pull it up and then they expand but uh, other than that they don't do anything and then uh, we went online on Amazon and we bought some new brakes Bendix I like the Bendix um, 
they've been out for a good while. Uh, I bought them quite a few times. You get a pretty cheap one there. I think it was like around twenty-two dollars something a set. And then you know if you bought them uh, Napa or something like that, they wanted uh, thirty-nine, forty dollars a set. And uh, I think all of them brown was like fifty dollars. Just buy them off Amazon. And, but you know I I know people don't like to support Amazon that much because they're saying we're taking business out of areas around here. But you know times are getting hard and, and you know. You're trying to save a few bucks you know what i mean it's not our fault that you know you can go on to uh napa and uh you know go somewhere else and find the same part napa selling but they're putting another 20 30 dollars on it that's ridiculous so that's their fault to me uh to, to increase the cost of that um i understand uh you know amazon sells like you know they make their uh people that sell their product on there to lower the prices and stuff like that i understand but you know we're all out looking for a little bit better deal so we got to do what we got to do okay uh i'm going to put a little bit of uh i got some paint i'm just going to kind of spray around a little bit and i do that every time i uh i get underneath of these i just take a can of paint and you know uh and then just kind of coat a little bit it keeps it from rusting so fast uh, you know, because if you don't put something underneath, though, they'll they'll get really bad. So we're not going to clean it up or nothing. We're just going to spray right over top of it, and then just go ahead and put this stuff back together. And then, like I said, I'll be in it later, anyways. Okay, here's a new rotor, and uh, you're really supposed to go through and like clean this oil off of it. I know this is pretty much the same stuff, but it does clean. Everybody's got their own preference. Now, I did buy this uh, rotors here from a, a local place. And it takes a little rubber cork here to go in there and adjust it. That's to adjust that uh, down here to adjust your brakes. Okay. Okay, let's see what it'll do. Oh, let me put a little bit of... You're not really supposed to do this. Don't put them on your threads, but you can put a little bit. It's anti-season around here. Just, just a little bit. Because like I said, it's, it's every probably two years I'm changing these. First, we need to get this. I'll take these. These in here. Get in there. I'm going to tap them down a little bit of the screwdriver. Wrong way. Okay, and what you really want to do is make sure you put just a little bit of this. They usually give it to you. Uh, it's a little bit of a grease, kind of a grease you want to put on them. And then uh, I help allow that to slide a little bit. I'm going to put some uh, anti-seize uh, a little bit on this bolt. Okay. 
Now, I ain't recommend anybody to do this, except me. This is how I do it. Now, if you do it that way, you're on your own. People don't like, uh, definitely never put this on your uh, lugs. Don't ever do that. Never put nothing on your lug nut or lug studs. I do like them a little, a little tight. Make sure they're going to be safe. A little tapping like that works really great. Make sure that rotor stays clean. Don't leave no oil film on your rotors. It won't work very well. Back. Okay, now one more thing we got to do. We're going to take these over there and put a little new grease on these parts right here. A little grease on them. These have to work, okay? So if you're doing this kind of brake work, always check these because if they stick, you know, you're, you'll wear your brakes out pretty fast. So if you're having a problem wearing out brakes, that would be it. Some of it. Let's press them in there. There's a little boot. Make sure the little boot goes up against here. You know, it kind of goes together right there. And you pull them back and forth like this. Make sure that boot's connected in there so you keep the dirt out of that. You don't want dirt getting If it does, it'll get seized up. You understand what I'm saying is? But you can feel it when you go to press it back. It just comes over like a little bit of a groove they have cut into it. Makes it uh, sealed up a little bit. Okay. Hey, getting this stuff all over the place. Okay, now we have this little caliber. Now, the only thing I do with these things is uh, I have a tool, but uh, I'm going to show you just in case you don't have a tool. You can always use an old brake shoe. You can get held up there for a second. And then just find yourself an old clamp. Okay. Put the old brake shoe on like that. And get it to hold steel for a minute. Right, yeah, there you go. Now just keep turning until you push that cylinder. You want to push that cylinder back up in there, okay? That way you don't have to go bleed these brakes. Most vehicles you don't have to. This is an older one, so this would be a 2010, so it's all right for this one. I'm, some of the new ones, I don't think you can do this. I think you got to go back and bleed all the brakes. That's why it costs a little bit more. Put brake shoes on. But if you got an order vehicle like this, it's just fine. Press these two things in. Now I don't put nothing on these. I never had any problem with them, you know, coming off. I should lift that top up there. And it uses a 14 millimeter or a non sixteenths. They're both the same. This is loose a little bit. It's gonna take a bigger wrench than that. I'll have to get something else here. You 
get something else to hold on to that. I don't, this is the only guy I only have with me right now. I wanted to get it done. All I'm doing is holding that. Of course, there's a place where you can put a wrench on that too, right here. So, you know, you can put a wrench in it and hold it. But, uh, for some reason, I don't have one with me. Uh, most of them have a little, kind of a little slot thing where it catches. But, uh, right there you go. It's on there. It's ready to go. I just got to put the wheel back on. But, like I said, the, some of these you have a little bit of problems, uh, with them sticking. But, uh. I'll put a little bit of this on it, just a tiny bit, and then uh, go through and I'll take some of it off. Now, that'll keep that rim from sticking on there. It, it has a tendency to stick, it, but don't get it on these. Don't ever put nothing on your studs, you know. And then uh, your studs, when you put them back, uh, you know, you put your uh, bolts back on there. You should torque these down. Uh, you can find uh, uh, torque specs on, off a of line. They'll have this so it could be safe so okay there you go wasn't too bad uh took a few minutes or so uh take this and off actually the other side took a lot longer to take off than this side did uh could i beat the crap out of that uh, that road on the other side but like i said this is designed with a little kind of uh the older ways but they had uh, uh not disc brakes but they had drum brakes so but that was the emergency brake in there so uh of course you do need it you know you should use it but uh, nothing too hard on a 2010 uh, Forester uh, Subaru. If you get a hold of one, that's probably the first thing you'll be doing is putting brakes on it. Uh, I haven't seen one yet. I've had a couple I put brakes on not too long ago. And uh, every one of them the same way. So, but really nice vehicle. So. Okay, that's it for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, hit that like button for me. I really appreciate it. So have a great day. and. Thanks for watching.